What's up, everybody? This is Garrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap that'll most likely get demonetized anyway. And all I have to say is hella, and we all know what that means, the teenage angst simulator with the oddball vocabulary and future smurf-haired colored protagonist is back. It's Life is Strange, the prequel before the storm. If you remember Life is Strange, that was the title that for many folks sort of outdid Telltale by adding game back into their games and having players live the life and times of two teenage girls, one with the power to move through time like a hot version of Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future and the other with the ability to, well, follow her around. Let's see how the prequel does, shall we? Set prior to the events of the original games, this time you play as Chloe and this first episode sees us jumping straight into her life. Before the Storm Episode 1 is from Deck 9 and out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC today or tomorrow, depending on where you are. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Life is Strange Before the Storm Episode 1. Lots and lots of birds, tabletop simulator simulated, and how to finesse a tongue battle. Graphics are up first. Honestly, this is a tragic step down. There isn't any other way to really say it, but gone is the gossamer softness and that excellent worksmanship and detail that in many ways harken back to the feeling of titles like Bully with pastels and even tones, and here it's replaced by something wholly different. Imagine if Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy looked just a little bit more detailed, and that's pretty much what you get here. Which is odd, as half the reasons we were told that they were switching things up, including the engine, was to address the animation and the graphical issues of the original. But the first time you see a character dance, which must be some kind of Life is Strange tradition, it looks like she's having a friggin' LSD trip and thinks she's covered with ants, versus the far more subtle and nuanced moments of the first series. Additionally, it's not just the locations that were somehow lobotomized just a little bit. We have a distinct advantage when it comes to the main characters, because some of them appear to have been run through some kind of bad memory filter, with one of the characters looking absolutely nothing like we remember them. Did you ever see that Last Man Standing episode where the older sister is replaced by a different actress and they all make an in-joke and then just sort of move on? Yeah, pretty much the same thing here, but no one really makes an in-joke. Just, okay, shit, you look like an alien and an elf had the world's most glorious one-night stand and you're the progeny, but you know what? Screw it. You're in. Even the locations that you revisit from the first series are actually less detailed, offering a very strange moment where you look back and go, am I just remembering this a certain way? And then unfortunately you see footage and you're like, you're not. It has less interactivity throughout the entire title. That being said, if you haven't played the other games, this will look okay. And while the strange mixture of lackluster textures, especially on faces and animations, can be a bit jarring, it's still cool to walk around the game world and just sort of live inside this place, especially when you know what the future's gonna bring. And lastly, a little bit about performance. I have to say, I'm surprised the game is actually not that good. It has stutter in most places. There's random moments and camera pans on two different systems this was occurring. And whenever a good deal of effect showed up on the screen, the frame rate started to dip a bit. I can't honestly explain to you why, but in the end, this performs fairly poorly. As a package, I'd say pretty disappointing. Sound, music, and voice. Chloe. You have no idea how crazy I am. Keep pushing and find out. You want a piece of this? Please. Kicking your ass is going to be a piece of cake. And you know what? Let's do music first. This was actually really good. Listen, Life is Strange probably has one of the best moments, the originals we're talking about here, where somewhat diegetic music creates an avenue which both the character and the player walk through to experience that entry into the fiction, and that's gonna be hard to match anywhere. Hell, it's even hard to come close to. But Before the Storm does try it with an epic barn concert and then a couple moments of quiet interlude with musical tones or vocals over them. And like it or dislike it, these moments will be connected, obviously, to the musical choices, which here are a bit harder, I would say, obviously, to augment the rough edges that we're supposed to understand sort of exist in Chloe's demeanor. I liked it, but for many people, I think it will lack a little bit of that subtlety that they remembered from the original. Sound. This is really good, especially when Chloe turns into the incredible bird-flipping She-Hulk and starts just smashing the front of a car like she's trying to drill for oil. 
it's all excellent samples or the overturning wheel across rail of the train as first name, first name and Chloe begin a trip and start playing truth or dare. Also, has any truth or dare game ever not ended up with some kind of romantic tension? Also, all joking aside, the fantastic sounds and just the many times the game was able and brave enough to sort of let the actual effects, many of them subtle environmental effects, come up without the music playing, I really did appreciate. Very good sound. Voice. So we know the voice actor strike has ripped through the digital realms of many a title, and no game is this so easily noticed as Before the Storm. The voice actress who plays Chloe just never really nails it, and the somewhat growly angst that made Chloe at the very least interesting is missing here. Additionally, the way the lines are delivered means that the switches between being normal and being typical Chloe are incredibly noticeable with some harsh transitions and a disconnected feeling, something that actually did not occur for many of Chloe's lines in the originals. And in many ways, I don't think this is the voice actress's fault because in the end, a lot of the writing, just most of the writing, pretty much anything that ever got wrote for this game is much worse than the original, which wasn't lauded for being Shakespearean excellent, I can tell you that much. It's clumsier here, and many times it's more direct and lacking in subtlety, and that's also reflected in the animations of the characters and just the overall way in which everybody engages, and it never really gets started. I would say as a package, pretty disappointing. Gameplay. And a little bit about the story. So before the storm sees us playing a 16-year-old Chloe Price, still bleeding from her wounded little heart that her best friend upped and left her with without a care. Now, it's obvious that Chloe does care because the internal voiceovers, if they aren't about two by fours or a set of pigeons or a friggin' gas can, it's about Max and how pissed she is that Max is gone. Now, this works well for the angst, but it doesn't work well at all for the world building, which, as you're playing the game for a little under two hours, you're probably going to notice almost instantly. If there's one strength that Before the Storm Episode 1 does have, it is revisiting the old places. And while the interactions have very little of the deft hand at momentary slights or unique physical and verbal cues indicating problems unspoken that the originals did, the locations here are still very cool to walk around in and see them subtly change from the last games. And this offers a very cool lived-in feeling to the whole game world. And there is a scene here that is easily equal, if you like these games, to any of the prior episodes. And that is a game of D&D, where for a brief moment, I was completely feeling like they had captured the original's nostalgic feeling perfectly. But one of the major issues here is the main character themselves. Obviously, the character that you're going to play in a game will frame the experience. And where Max was a nostalgic and artful kind of person... Chloe is almost completely hedonistic, hilariously blaming everyone else for any preconceived slights when she's about as fun to have around as a sentient friggin' canker sore. And I admit, that sounds like a blast at first. Honestly, that's the type of character I'd want to play. And for a moment, it is, flipping the bird to everyone and just generally being a horse's ass. But while that worked well in the original, because Chloe had the ability to bounce off of Max, here it's a bit off because Chloe isn't really interested in looking around. She's not interested in taking in the world or even talking to people. Instead, she's pretty much interested in getting drunk, fighting, listening to music, and being alone, and possibly Rachel. What's really sad here is the game's pacing doesn't allow for Chloe to resonate as isolated or hurt or anything like that, even though it occasionally tries. And even her power in the game could logically be called bitch tongue. Where Max had time travel, Chloe basically has blather. No lie, that's pretty much what it is. It's a verbal sparring contest where you listen to what someone says and then you repeat it back to them like it's some kind of sick burn. Oh, you don't want to mess with me? Oh yeah, because you're a mess? It's terrible. Luckily, that fades off pretty quickly and you end up meeting Rachel Amber, whose parents obviously couldn't decide on a first name and just said, screw it, let's give her two. They end up striking up this oddball relationship that doesn't really get a chance to start. It flails wildly around for a bit and then one of the oddest plot conveniences ever, it ends up with the characters splitting up only to not split up so that they can meet up many hours later at a tree that's about 100 yards away from where they thought they split up from. It's like a damn Spaceballs time travel skit. Fun factor. It was not fun. I can pretend, and I certainly would have loved to, and I would have loved to actually enjoyed it because I enjoyed the originals. I really liked them, but less gameplay, less game, and less interaction with the game, oh, and less interaction with the characters themselves, it's hard to actually like it. This is like being handed bases loaded then treating the friggin' baseball like a hockey puck and wondering why everyone else is mad at you. Instead, it's a vapid, quickly forgotten, let's meet back up with everyone from the original games type of title with a don't blink or you're gonna miss it attitude, and honestly, I can say you should probably blink. So as you guys know, I rate episodic titles as a jump in now or a wait kind of situation, especially as new episodes come out. This is absolutely a wait. 
Right now, there's almost no game here, and what little actually does occur, if you were somebody who enjoyed those originals, I really don't see you really, really falling in love with this game as it is right now. It doesn't have any of the subtlety, and in the end, while that character could have been really fun to play, the entire game felt incredibly shallow, like no one really knew what that character was wanting to do in the game world, and it feels lost from start to finish. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Remember to check out Twitter or Patreon. That's how I can continue to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap like so many other places do. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.